In this lesson, we will build the core skeleton of our facial rig, which include the neck, head, and jaw joints. The scene is 03 Begin. So to start out, what I like to do is go ahead and disable the hypernerve smoothing on our face and on the brows so we can keep track of the low res topology. It'll be a lot easier on us when it comes to uh, joint placement and, and things like that, especially when it comes to to weighting the head when we get to that step. All right, so I'm going to go in and expand the male face hierarchy and just go in and, again, disable the hypernerve objects. All right, great. So at this point, we can move over to our side view to make sure we're in wireframe mode. You can use the hotkey NG to do that. We'll grab our joint tool. Let's go ahead and take a look at the settings we're working with. So I like to use the default settings here. So to create joints, we'd use the control key. If we need to reposition a joint, we can use the left mouse button and then can use shift to split. But something I'd like to point out here is root null. I'm going to go ahead and work with this on because that gives us an extra level of control over that joint. If we need to add any more features to the joint so it behaves a certain way, we can go ahead and add those features to the root null. And that leaves the joint free for more connections. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. We'll start by drawing out the, the base of the neck. Just hold down control and click to create the first joint. The next will be right in front and underneath the earlobe. This is where the head will pivot from. Now, if you cannot see your joints as you draw these out, just make sure under filter you have joints enabled. Now, very important, I'm going to go ahead and separate the head chain from the neck Again, so we have more freedom over the chains we, we build. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure to deselect here. And then we can go back to our joint tool. And we'll create the head joint right above the end of the neck. We'll create its last joint at the top of the character's head. Won't worry about aligning the head to the end of the neck just yet. We will want to do that so that as the head and neck rotate, we don't have any weird rotational offsets. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and spend a little bit of time renaming these objects. So for root objects, I like to use the prefix root followed by what's contained. So that's going to be neck 01. For joint objects that will be skin to, I like to use a prefix of bn by neck 01. And what's great is that when we need to search for all of those skin joints, it's just a matter of finding these objects using the search field and, and we'd search for this prefix. And then for our end joint, that's going to be BE neck 01. All right, so the head, it's going to be the same way. Let's go to the root. That's going to be root head 01. The skin joint will be BN head, and the end joint, BE. Great. Later on, we will be organizing this, this hierarchy, which is very important, especially in, in Cinema 4D, when the order determines how things get evaluated. But even more importantly, we want it very easy for other artists to find nodes in our scene. So by spending a little bit of time making sure that everything is, is clean and organized, we can help the rest of our team out. All right, so now that these are renamed, let's go ahead and grab the head root, and we'll go ahead and align this to the end of the neck. So everything is, is right on top of one another. We can go ahead and work with our snapping tools. I'll enable snapping, and let's go ahead and take a look at our list here. So I'll disable everything we don't need. That's grid snapping. Turn off the construction plane here. And we want to work with a 3D snap. We'll use axis snapping. I'll go to the move tool and now snap that right on top of the neck. All right, so everything's starting to come together. Let's go to the head bone now, this join object. And we'll 
adjust its size so that it's very easy to select that object from the viewport. So underneath the bone drop down, underneath display, we'll go ahead and set this to custom. That's way too large. Let's go ahead and bring the size down. Maybe to about a value of, of one. One works. All right, great. So we're good to go there. Now I would like to point out if you go through and accidentally select your, your mesh, feel free to go to layers and disable the face layer. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're just working on our our joint hierarchy right now. All right, great. So now that that's taken care of, we can go in and create our jaw rig. I'll go ahead and disable axis snapping. Let's go back to our joint tool. Let's go back to the attributes manager. And we'll start with the upper jaw. Again, we'll draw that right on top of the head bone. And then we can go ahead and draw in the end joint at the, the upper lip. Great. Again, we'll make sure to deselect so it does not get added to that hierarchy when we create the lower jaw. We hit spacebar to go back to the joint tool. And let's go ahead and create this last joint object. Okay, great. So now that those are drawn in, we can go ahead and spend some time renaming these objects. So for the upper jaw, that will be root upper jaw 01. The joint object that we'll skin to be BN upper jaw. We're using the same naming convention here. All right, great. So that leaves us with the lower jaw. Let's go ahead and take care of that. Two more to rename. And one more. Beautiful. All right, so let's go ahead and align these. Let's go ahead and grab the roots, enable axis snapping. Let's go to our move tool. And we'll just make sure that everything is on top of one another. Great. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the bone size itself. I'd say we could go ahead and drop the size of the lower jaw. So I'll just go back to custom. Again, that's way too large here. Let's go ahead and keep dropping this down. Let's say to about 0.5. Let's see how that works. That works out very well. Okay, great. So at this point, we can go ahead and work on some parenting work. Let's grab the upper and lower jaw roots and make sure they are parented to the head bone. Great. Now, remember that, that functionality that we saw in the previous lesson where as we, as we rotated the, the neck, the position of the head would follow, but the rotation would not? Well, let's go ahead and set up that right now, just to make sure that the head rig is, is connected, is attached. So in order to do that, one way is to just add a constraint tag to our head's root. So with that selected, we'll go in and add the constraint tag under character tags. There it is. We'll define this as a PRS constraint. And underneath the PRS tab, let's go ahead and disable rotation. Now it's just a matter of grabbing the end of the neck and adding that into our target field. So watch, we can no longer move the head's root, but we can most certainly go in and, and rotate. All right, great. So as we start to move the neck around, you can see how the head will follow. Very fun stuff. Okay, great. Now, to finish up, I'd highly recommend that you rename these tags that you create. Makes it a lot easier to find them, to figure out what they do. All right, so this name here, constraint, that's too generic. Let's go ahead and define this further. That's POS for position constraint, followed by what has been constrained. So that's root underscore head zero one. one. So that gives us a better idea of what this constraint's uh, responsibility is. All right, so that's going to end this lesson. 
In the next lesson, we are going to work on our eye joints.